Hello, students. I'm the Divine Goddess of Econ. Welcome to my first lecture video. Today, I will cover the linkage between marginal product or productivity and marginal cost. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered why diminishing marginal product or productivity implies increasing marginal cost? Let me explain to you why that is step by step. So follow, follow me. By the way, what is marginal product? Well, it has two different but similar definitions, one using calculus and the other without using calculus. Today I will cover the one without using calculus. But of course I will cover the calculus version in another video. Remember I am the goddess of econ. I can cover everything. But first let's look at the non-calculus definition of marginal product. Mathematically, it is defined as the change in output over the change in input. Here, the numerator is the change in output due to the change in input. In other words, it basically shows by how much the output would increase if the input of production increased by one unit. If the input is labor, economists call it marginal productivity of labor, or MPL for short. And if the input is capital, marginal productivity of capital, or MPK for short. As you can see, marginal product or productivity shows by how much the output would increase if the input increased by one unit. Next, let's look at the cost side of production. The total cost of production can be broken down into two parts, the fixed cost and the variable cost. The fixed cost is literally fixed. It does not increase or decrease as per production. In other words, it is not related to the quantity produced. For example, you would still need to pay office rent monthly to your landlord even if you did not operate your facility for that month. So this kind of cost is simply fixed. But the variable cost is the kind of cost that depends on how much you produce. Naturally, this kind of cost will increase as more goods are produced. This is because normally more input is needed to increase the quantity produced. The more the input, the higher the cost of production. What this all implies is that, as the firm increases output, the total cost increases by the amount by which the variable cost increases. So, we can simply ignore the fixed cost part, as it remains the same, regardless of the production level. For example, let's look at the case of labor as a sole input to production. How would you define the variable cost in this case? Well, it is simply wage times unit of labor employed, isn't it? If wage is an exogenous variable, meaning outside of the firm's control, then if the firm hires one more unit of labor, its labor cost will increase exactly by the wage rate. If the firm hires two more units of labor, its labor cost will increase by twice the wage rate, and so on and so forth. Now, let us turn to the concept of marginal cost. Marginal cost is defined as the change in the total cost of production over the change in the quantity produced. In other words, it shows by how much the total cost of production would increase if the firm produced one more unit of output. And we have seen that the fixed cost part does not change with the quantity produced, so the change in the total cost simply becomes the change in the variable cost. And what was the variable cost in the case of labor as a sole input? Well, it was simply wage times unit of labor. So, the change in variable cost can be rewritten as the change in labor times the wage rate. And if we put delta L over delta Q into a parenthesis, the marginal cost equals the following. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Doesn't the fraction in the parenthesis look familiar to you? Don't you think it somewhat resembles the definition of marginal product of labor we have already covered? Since marginal product of labor is delta Q over delta L, we know that this is simply a reciprocal of what's in the parenthesis above. Therefore, we can rewrite the equation as marginal cost equals wage times 1 over marginal product of labor. And now we're almost there. What does this equation tell us? Well, it shows that marginal cost is inversely related to marginal product of labor. As marginal product of labor decreases, marginal cost increases. And vice versa. So, we can conclude that under normal circumstances diminishing marginal product or productivity implies increasing marginal cost. This is a very important concept in production theory and is also very closely related to the properties of supply curve. So, you'd better not forget what you've learned in today's lecture given by the goddess of econ. Econ can be fun and sometimes sexy as I am. I hope it was helpful. 
Please keep visiting my channel as more fun lecture videos will be uploaded in the future. God bless all.